All right. Here we go. Oh. By the way, for those who don't know me, my name is Larry. Somebody's gonna you're gonna have to mute your uh, somebody's gotta mute their uh because it's I'm getting feedback. Somebody's got what? Mute their speakers. Somebody somebody I think it might be Carla. Okay. Uh, this is my um this is my telephone number, this is my email account. Um that's my Facebook. That's my Twitter. If you need to get in touch with me, uh, I'll be giving this PowerPoint to you guys so that you'll be able to get a hold of me. I'll be sending it out to you. Okay. So uh, I want, I'd like everybody to go around the room as, as best we can and um, introduce yourself, inter say what trip you're going on, and also. Um, Basically, tell one expectation you have. Maybe you don't have any expectations, but uh, if you have any expectations, um, give one for the trip. What would you like to see happen on the trip? So why don't we start with Debbie, and then I'll just name because I can see you on here. So let's start with Debbie. Debbie, introduce yourself. Okay. What, what trip you're going on, and one. One expectation. Okay. Um, what was it? I didn't hear your first thing before with the expectation. You introduce yourself and what trip you're going on. Oh, my name is Debbie Strayer, and I'm going on the Moldova trip. Um, I guess my expectation would be just to um, connect with connect with the youth there and uh, show them love. Okay. Great. It is, I mean, the love of Christ is something that yes. people can sense. Good. Let's go to Floyd and uh, Caitlin. Hi, my name's Floyd Sears and I think that was your first question. Yep. And your second question was, what are our expectations? Uh, we we really want to honor God and and proclaiming the gospel and helping the children to understand it, that they might be able to do the same thing. Uh, we've heard from Sandy how children have gone back and shared the gospel, and parents have been saved, and in so doing, whole ha whole, whole families have been saved. Mm -hmm. So, we would expect this to be true to the gospel and true to the Great Commission. Caitlin can speak now. Thank you. I mean, that's a honoring God is the most. I think is is the one and very important thing to do. Um, Caitlin, are are you there or? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, my name is Caitlin Sears. Uh, my dad and I are going together. Mrs. Marty convinced us to go. Where are you? And, uh, we're going on the Ukraine trip. Okay. Okay. And what 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 what, what ex basic expectation do you have? Caitlin. I think they got cut off. Okay, so let's go to Jerry. Jerry's next. Okay, well, my name is Jerry Barker, and um, I live in Minnesota, and I'm going to Moldova. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I really, I want to learn how to be a missionary. I want to learn how to minister to people. Um, in Eastern Europe, so that's what I want to learn. Wow, well, that's a great, that's a great thing to want. I think that's a lifetime. That's a lifetime right there. Yeah. But I'm on the other end of my lifetime, so it's about time I yeah. get going on this. So that's what my desire is. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Next we have, who's next here, Carla? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have to unmute yourself now. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll try it. Did... Okay. Can you hear me now? I can. Yep. Okay. Okay, my name's Carla, and I'm from Florida, but I happen to be in North Carolina tonight. So um, I'm going on the um, Ukraine trip, and I guess my expectation is just to see what God does, and he always does something different. You can't ever quite plan it, um, just like what he's going to do in me and what he's going to do through the camp, and just excited about that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Carla's been many times to Ukraine. How many times now, Carla? Like five, six, seven? Well, this will be my 10th trip to Ukraine, but I think my fifth trip with Tamar Clubs. Wow. Awesome. So she's a, uh, she's a seasoned veteran. <laughs> well, I said once he gets, um, once Ukraine gets in your blood, it's hard to get it out. Yeah, it is. Oh, you, you are correct. Okay. Then we have Lauren. Lauren. Um, I'm Lauren. Uh, I'm from Minnesota. Um, and I'm going on the Moldova trip. Um, and I, my expectations, um, just to really be able to um, like one, um, just share love to some of these kids who might not have been able to feel it for the first time. Um, it's one thing to be able to, like, you were teaching English, right? Um, but to teach them, like, the word love, but to also be able to partially give it a definition to then be able to link it to, like, we love you, but, like, the love of Christ is so much greater and so much more valuable. And the significance of using language amongst the gospel, um, because the gospel has a weight when words are paired, um, and so just, yeah, that's my expectation, I guess. <laughs> that's really special, Lauren. I mean, uh, you embody when you're there, and Carla and I and Cindy, Cindy's now on, which is great. Um, when, you know, the kids know whether you love them or not. They know right away, you know. And I think, you know, just being able to share that love of Christ whether you can talk to them or say anything to them or not, they know. Um, they know exactly uh, what what's going on. The next person, who's the next person here? Lisa. Lisa Holtberg. Lisa, are you there? Lisa. Okay. Okay. Now I'm unmuted. I think. Can yes, you hear me? Yeah. Oh, I, great. I can hear. You. I yeah. was having some technical difficulty. Things were working, and then they just stopped working. So now I am on my mobile phone doing it. So, um, so I didn't get to hear the last oh ten minutes worth. I'm afraid. Okay. Well, people just went around and introduced themselves and what trip they're going to, and then um, actually given one expectations they have of the trip that they're going on. So. Um, okay. Well, I live in Egan, Minnesota, and I'm part-time in Naples, Florida. And so um, I am going on the Moldova 2 trip, and I was um, to central Ukraine two years ago. And, um, you know, my expectation is just to be willing to do whatever God puts before us and just to be um, flexible and um filled with his joy and just to love these kids like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa and Doug came, were, was at a camp that I was at in uh, two years ago, I guess. And uh, yeah, it, it, we had an opportunity to share the love of Christ with his kids. I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, serving with Doug and Lisa. Um, okay, Cindy. Cindy, are you there? I can see that you're on. You need to talk. 
NC Talk. Maybe not. Okay, we'll just keep going. Uh, again, thank you for your commitment. Um, you know, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine were doing all these. So um, this is going to be a little bit, probably a little bit longer. I'm going to try to keep it, uh, you know, we have a limited amount of time. Um, uh, we have a lot to get over. So we will probably have to uh, have multiple meetings here. So at any rate, uh, thank you for your commitment. There, there really is no way that we could do these trips without uh, you guys uh, volunteering your time and energy and uh, resources and uh, you know love. And uh, we just, I just thank you so much for being involved. Um, I think personally that you get way more out of it than you put into it because uh, mm. it's just a it's a learning experience uh, on all case, on all parts for me. Every time I go, I see something or learn something new, and uh, I think you uh, will, will feel the same thing. Okay, let's keep. Mary, Mary? Yes. Can you do a quick rundown? I, I we lost connection. I think after Caitlin started talking, of who's going on which trip. Yeah, I can try to give it here. Um, of course, Cindy is going to Russia and Moldova. Debbie's going to Moldova. Uh, you guys, I think, are going to Floyd, uh, Ukraine. Yes. Um, Jerry is going to uh, – she's going to Moldova. Uh, Carla is going to Ukraine. Uh, Lauren – uh, is going to Moldova and Lisa is going to Moldova. Okay, uh, there are a numbers of people that are not on this meeting, but I I'm gonna I'm recording this and so uh, I'll be putting it up on the web for people to look at. Uh, is that good? Is, Thank you. You have any other questions, Floyd? Not right now. Okay. All right, let me get back here. Um, Mary, can, can you hear me yet? I can, Cindy. Hey, hi, hi. everyone. Hi. Oh, you guys, I've been listening to you, but I wasn't able to say anything, and it was killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> hi. Cindy, hi. introduce yourself and tell them what trip you're going to <laughs> and what expectations Okay, my have. name is Cindy Marty, and I'm going to Russia and Moldova too, God willing, and I am just praying that the that the Lord would fill all of us with His Holy Spirit, and that we would just share Christ and His love with all of those kids. And I can hardly wait to get there on the ground, and just just be right there among them, and um, just love them to pieces. Yes. And thank you so much, everybody. It's just been so fun to hear your voices out there and. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for be, being willing to go. I don't so excited. Somebody said, Cindy, that you uh, talked them into going on a trip, and I I, all, I said, that <laughs> there's only two people in the world that you can't say <laughs> to. Jeff Foote, who's the founder of Hope International, and Cindy Marty. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you can't say no to him. Yes. Um <laughs> I don't know if you can see my screen or not, but what am, what what are the some of the things? What are their expectations? What are the people's expectations that we're going to? Um, I just want to talk just a briefly about culture um, and how they see things a little different than we do. And uh, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, one of the translators that I that um, worked with quite often um, and one time we were there, we just were uh, on the bus or something. I don't remember where it was, but um, he said that uh, something something about the, the place that we were at. She said, "I'm ashamed. Hmm. That I'm ashamed of what you're, you're seeing here." And it was the best they had to offer. 
because she'd been to the States and she'd seen the things and uh, she, she'd seen what the differences are, you know. And I think the one of the worst things you could possibly do is, you know, if they're giving you your best is to somehow belittle that or, you know, put your nose up at it or, you know, I think uh, I think we have to be a very, very aware and acutely attuned to the things that are going on around you. They, they see Americans a little different. They see them as loud and boisterous and, um, you know, sometimes they're disrespectful. They think they're disrespectful, but they like Americans. But um, there is a lot of poverty too. And I, I think one of the things for sure is that you need to, you know, be, pay attention to that culture, you know, pay attention to what uh, their expectations are and, and what they, uh, you know, what's going on with their lives. Anybody have anything to say about in there? Cindy, do you have anything? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you, Larry. That's great. Okay. Now, um, some of you guys know what the Tomorrow Clubs are and some of you don't, okay? Uh, I'm going to play... Um, I'm going to play a quick video here, and you guys will get a chance to see this movie about tomorrow clubs. And it'll be a little jerky, but I want you to you get a good idea what it's like. Club. Here at the club, they always shared my struggles with me. I felt good here. Now I love God. We arrived in Ukraine a few years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, but as we traveled to small towns and villages, we saw that the country was still reeling. Crumbling infrastructure, soaring unemployment, poverty, corruption. Many people put their faith in capitalism, but we knew that the hope Ukraine needed was not capitalism, but Christ. In the rural area, we noticed the churches consisted mostly of elderly people. As we spoke to the children in Ukraine, we found out that most of them had never heard the name of Jesus before. Many of them had never even set foot in a church. God was showing us that uniting the church and the children of Ukraine would give both new life. But we held on to the words of a promise that God gave us from 1 Thessalonians 5.24. Faithful is he who calls you, for he will do it. Our own kids had attended children's Bible clubs, and we really felt strongly that God was calling us to do something similar to that in Ukraine, where the children could hear the gospel, learn life skills through our hobby classes, and be mentored by our Christ-following Tomorrow Club's leaders. We would teach the children to memorize scripture, hiding God's word in their hearts, and giving them tools to cling to in the difficulties of life. We called the clubs the Tomorrow Clubs, because we knew that God would be faithful to use these clubs to build the future of Ukraine. We trained Christians from local churches to lead the Tomorrow Clubs, giving them an opportunity many had longed for to make disciples as they loved and mentored the children each week. Clubs began to spread throughout the country. There were clubs and orphanages, clubs for children with disabilities, and clubs that targeted street children. Some clubs met in local churches, and others met in communities where there was no local church. Children flocked to the clubs, and then their parents began to come as well as they noticed their children's lives being changed by the gospel. When we told them about Christ, they would bombard us with questions. This is the only place where these children hear about God. Little by little, God was working through the Tomorrow Clubs to build the church. We were responding by faith to a call that God had placed on our hearts. We really had no idea that God would use this ministry to reach tens of thousands of children and their families. As we see God leading us into new communities and new countries, we're reminded of his promise from 1 Thessalonians, faithful is he who calls you, for he will do it. We're inviting you to be a part of how God will accomplish his work through the Tomorrow Clubs. Please join us in praying for the clubs or consider investing in the future. Your gift to the Tomorrow Clubs will help us build a brighter tomorrow in the communities where we work, impacting children and their families for eternity. 
Where can we find that video? Um, it's going to be the PowerPoint that I'm going to send out to you guys. It'll be linked in there. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what um, what were your impressions of that, the video, what you saw? We thought it was a neat video. Uh, I, I, Kayla and I both understand what Mrs. Marty's goal is, is uh, to get the Holy Spirit to work in people's lives to save them. Uh, they can have all the money in the world. And still go to hell. So we know that it's it's for their soul's sake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Anybody else have any comments? Well, this is Lisa. You know, and I, what is so encouraging for me too is not just the summer camp where we come for a week, but then the tomorrow clubs that will continue on to to be involved in the children's lives and to disciple them you know, for years and years and years to come. So, you know, we're just one little tiny, tiny little cog in the wheel of uh, such a greater plan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, um, you know, God is marching to his end and his, he has, he has a plan for the world and mm -hmm. he's marching to its end. And in some, and we have an opportunity to join him at where he's working. And folks, I'm telling you, he's working in the children in Ukraine and the former Soviet Union. Uh, and this is not just changing one life. This is changing a generation. Actually can change the way somebody thinks, the whole, the way the nation thinks. And it's, it's powerful. It's, it's, it's one of the most powerful things. I mean, it's uh, eternal. I mean, your, your fruit goes on. You know, you bring, you help someone come to Christ, and then they help someone else come to Christ, and you start at a young age. You know, D.L. Moody was once asked when he was going to a, he went to a meeting, and he said, "How many people trusted Christ?" Or, and he said, "Well, uh, he said, how many people gave their life to Christ?" And, and he, they said, "Well, uh, two and a half." And he goes, "Oh, you mean two adults and and." Uh, one child he goes no I meant two children and one adult <laughs> because their lives are in front of them and I'm telling you that's a powerful thing because you don't know what a life can accomplish um, so let's talk about the goal for the trip. the goal is through your participation in the English camp that you'll start and strengthen an existing tomorrow start or strengthen an existing tomorrow club, and in uh, different places, depending on where you're going, it'll be starting a club. Uh, in some places, it will be there's already an existing club, and we're going to help um, them to uh, actually strengthen the club. Uh, of course, we talked about sharing the love of Christ. That's that's probably preeminent. I mean, the love of Christ speaks volumes. It's the trump card. It's the trump card with dealing with people. Uh, it, it beats everything. And then lastly, of course, we're going to encourage the local church. As you know, the Tomorrow Clubs work with the local church, uh, and they're, they're uh, entrenched throughout Ukraine and um, with the local uh, body of believers. So they're you'll be involved with the local church. So <laughs> that's what there's, uh, your goal is. I think one of the main things, you know, we talk about preparing for this trip, or preparing for a trip. Um, one thing that you need to recognize is this is a, this is a spiritual thing. It's not just uh, some kind of a, you know, something that just uh, kind of a vacation. It's a spiritual endeavor. Um, there's a spiritual battle that goes on behind the scenes for this. You know, the, the communist world lived in darkness for 70 years, you know, and that, that's a spirit, there's a spiritual nature to that. And so when we go to 
uh, carry the gospel to these children. There's a spiritual nature to that. And you need to prepare yourself, actually you almost prepare yourself for a spiritual, it's not necessarily a battle, but a spiritual endeavor. And I think the, the best thing, one of the best things to uncover your heart, find out where your the, the glaring issues are, are the Bible. It's the Bible, you know, and prayer. And I would say coming up to this trip, you need to think, you need to pray and you need to look at the Bible and you need to ask God about yourself. You know, he's called you to these trips, but he wants you to be prepared to be able to do the work that he's given you to do. And, you know, look at your heart and read the Bible and say, God, is there anything you need me to change? Is there anything I need to do? Because when you get there, then it's just there's a, a another it's just another it takes it to another level because you're not in your your local environment you are pretty much isolated and in certain cases you're alone um, and it makes it more difficult there's interpersonal things that can happen and if things something that go wrong can go wrong it will go wrong and I think one of the things that you really got to recognize there is it's probably going to go wrong and you need to be flexible and just willing to go with the flow uh, because God knows God knows exactly why uh, things are happening I can't tell you how many times things didn't necessarily go right for us and, and in the end um, we understood why uh, because he had a plan and he had a purpose and also the children's hearts the children that will be hearing the gospel now you should be praying for them you should be praying for the the uh, things that you have um, in your heart, and also for the 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 interactions and meetings that you're going to have. None of these meetings, none of the people that you meet, are by accident. Nothing. None of this is by accident. It's what God wants, and He there's no accident to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing spirit, significantly spiritual happens without prayer. So the, 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 the prayer needs to start now. And it, it, it's not like you shouldn't be praying anyway, but this needs to start, and you need to start thinking about the children that are going to hear the gospel. Um, Peter Danica, who was the, he actually was the founder of Slavic Gospel Mission, which is a pretty well-known mission to the former Soviet Union, he used to say, he said, um, much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power. Um, and we're going to take a look at this just a little bit. And um, there's a, a section in here that I want to read to you because it just illustrates how important the, um, you know, the spiritual nature of it is and how important prayer is when you're uh, facing this or when actually when you're doing anything. But uh, particularly this, um, in here, um, Peter talks about this right at the beginning of, uh, of here that I want to want to kind of look at. I don't know if you can see that well or not. But basically he says, the Bible, the word of God, gives many reasons why we should pray. Yet many people do not think that it important or necessary to emphasize prayer. There are Christians who depend much on experience, education, work, effort, action, and programs, yet leave out the most important thing in the Christian life, prayer. Some, some uh, seldom pray. Others pray only when they feel like it. Uh, we are not, uh, not to pray only when we feel like praying. According to the Word of God, Prayer must be a regular, common practice in our lives. It is our spiritual breath. Think about that just for a second. You know, if you're not praying, you're not breathing and life. We cannot live spiritually without it. Christ needed to pray. We must pray. In Matthew 14, 23, we read, And when he had set, had set the multitudes, sent the multitudes away, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was alone there. Just think, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, prayed and talked much in private to his heavenly Father. If the 
the Son of God prayed, how much more do we need to pray to our Heavenly Father, Jesus? Uh, when alone to the to the mountain to pray, any one of us can get alone and pray. It's important for each Christian to go someplace where no one can disturb him and pour out his heart to God. So that's uh, that's really what I was. Uh, we'll leave it there. But I think I'm just e emphasizing the, the importance of um, uh, how important it is to pray and to uh, think about that. So teamwork, I think one of the things that we need to do is have someone on the team that we are praying together with and get to pray uh, in concert with. Um, I want to take some time here and put together some prayer requests that we would have. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now that uh, we thought that we we're probably going to, this is going to be uh, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. It's going to go way longer than that. If you have to get off, I'm not um, I'm not offended. Uh, you can just get off whenever you want to. I'll keep recording this and then I'll be putting it out so that you guys can, uh, you know, you can get it when you need it. Okay, um, let's take some time. I, I, there isn't really anybody here from Russia, so you know, I think one of the prayer requests I have that the, ch the children would uh, trust Christ as their as their savior, uh, I, I filled in one with Moldova, um, and I can't tell you folks uh, how many times that I've put these prayer requests down ahead of time before the trip, and then I've come back to them after the trip and seen how God met each one in, mm -hmm. in a very special way. So this is not just an exercise. Um, I think God loves those children. He, there's a special place in God's heart for those children, and he wants them to, to trust him. And uh, so um, we're going to put down, we're going to actually put down some prayer requests here. And and, uh, and then when you get this, then you'll be able to, um, you know, pray for them. Uh, the people that are going to Moldova, what is, you know, what one thing do you want to see happen uh, besides children trusting Christ, um, this is the time that you can give me feedback. That like, oh, go ahead. You can go first. Oh, no, you go ahead. That's fine. Um, I think the biggest thing is just like, um, I have, haven't really been to Europe, um, but in some of my other like experiences overseas. Um, even when it comes to like the idea of Christianity, there's a lot of variations of the Gospels, and so that their hearts would just be really open to like the truth, um, and that like the Lord would just be like speaking the truth and giving them resistance to maybe the lies that are being um, told around them. So like they would have resistance to being deceived. I, I just want to ask for Moldova that the Lord would, we would pray that the Lord would just pour his love into our hearts so we can pour that out on the children because I know that life is very difficult for those kids there and I can just hardly wait to get there and just get down to their level and just love them to Jesus. Just love them right into his arms because um, their lives are difficult, very difficult there. Say that again. I've never, I don't think I've seen as much poverty as I did. Yeah. It's a hard, hard place in uh, so many ways that we can't go into right now, but we can talk about that more maybe on another meeting, just some of the things that, the hardships there. Ukraine, you know, who, people that are going to Ukraine, Carla, maybe you get something there. I think you're muted, Carl. Well, I know that hope in our... Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, I know that hope... My phone plug. 
I know that Hope is um, international as well as Tamar Clubs is wanting to start ministry among the Roma people. So I guess just that we would be able to help them um, develop some key relationships and to learn more about this community through you know our interactions with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's a good one. Um, I get I got to read a little bit about what's ha happening there. You know, that's fantastic. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Anybody else for Ukraine? Yeah, I would just like to say that um, we should pray for the relationships culturally. Like you said earlier, there may be some difficulties between cultural relationships, and we don't want that to get in the way of our message because the Bible is for everyone, no matter what country you're from. Yeah. I think another one for all these guys is, is interpersonal. Um, you may not believe it, but there can be interpersonal uh, struggles on teams, especially if you're, because you get hot and tired and it's the end of the, it's getting towards the end of the week and just, you know, I just pray that that's one thing I'd pray. Um, I'd like to, uh, somebody from Moldova, um, who's going to Moldova? Let's see, uh, Jerry? Yeah. Will you pray that um, that that the children, some children, would trust Christ? And um, Debbie, would you pray? Uh, actually, yeah, Debbie, pray the, that the hearts would their hearts would be open to the truth, and they would know when there's things that are false. And, and Lauren, uh, could you pray that um, that we would put, that the Lord would pour His love into our hearts so it overflows into the children's hearts? Could you pray for that? And then. Um, uh, Carla, can you pray that um, your your one there where it says that um, that you'll be able to develop key relationships there, and um, and um, Karina, uh, I think it was Karina uh, Floyd's daughter. Can you pray uh, about the Caitlin? Caitlin. Yeah, the relationships, and then. Uh, all closing in personal. Let's just spend some time right now and, and uh, pray pray through those. I can take Rasha too, Larry, if you want me to. Okay. Okay. You just pray. Then you want you start and then I'll I'll finish. Right. Okay. 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 Dear Lord, we just come before you, Lord, and we thank you so much that you hear our prayers, Lord. We thank you so much for every person that's gathered here today to uh, talk, pray, and prepare for um, reaching the children for you, Lord, when we get to these countries. And I pray for each person that wasn't able to join us and even for all the people going to all the other countries too this summer, Lord, to reach those kids for you. And Lord, I, I want to start by praying specifically for Russia. Lord, um, we just we are just so grateful that you opened the door for us to go to this um, mm. this very remote place in Ro Russia, Lord, and we know that you have a reason for it, Lord, and we just pray that you would go before us and prepare the hearts of those precious kids that we're going to be reaching. I pray, Lord, that you would just open up their hearts and that they would be prepared to hear the gospel, Lord, and I pray that you would fill each one of us full of your Holy Spirit and your love, Lord, so that we can go and share with them, Lord, that you would just even speak through our mouths, Lord, and, and Lord, touch the hearts of those children so that they would repent and come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We are just, Lord, again, so grateful that you've opened the door for us to go to this place where it's a remote and, and very much unreached place, and we are just just waiting, Lord, to get there, and we thank you for that opportunity, and as as you've opened the door for the other countries, too, Lord, we just want to thank you with all our hearts, and we love you so much. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, right now, I just come before you, we come before you, and Lord, I just pray 
that as we are in these countries, as we are ministering, ministering to these children, Lord God, I pray that we just really see them. See them as, as you see them. Mm -hmm. See them with your eyes. And Lord God, I pray that they see us back and they see Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that he is their answer. Lord, they can't look around them. They have to look to you. Lord, I pray that you just use our eyes Use our, the, the eyes of them to see us and us to see them. Lord, they're no different than our children in this country. We all need you. And Lord, yes. with all the difficulties of their lives, Lord, they need you even more, Lord, because yes. it is difficult. They need you. Lord, I just pray that we see them and they see Jesus in us. Father, we just, Father, I just lift up this. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to uh, take your word into these countries. And we just thank you that even now you are preparing the hearts of those that uh, we are going to be speaking to. And Father, we just thank you that you know all things and you know the lies that they have been told. And you know that we come armed with your truth through the word of God. And that we can just, um, we just pray that you will prepare their hearts, that they might be open to hear everything about you, and that they might hear how your son, you gave your son to come and die for their sins. Help them to be able to see truth to what we do there. And what we just pray for uh, your equipping right now. Lord, I thank you for this Lord, I just... and this privilege, <laughs> Father, to um, to go to this community in Ukraine, Father, among the Roma people, Lord. And I admit I know very little about this culture, Father. I pray that um, you would just help our team to come together, Lord, as we're coming from different places. And I pray that we just bond and, um, with the Ukrainian team. And I pray as we work in this community, Lord, that it would lay a foundation for further work. I hope that um, that there would be key relationships built, Father, that information that's necessary would be obtained and that a foundation for a Tomorrow Club ministry would be laid and that that foundation would be based on you and it would be solid and that um, beginning in September there would be a tomorrow club among these people Lord and we just thank you Father that you would just um, allow us to come alongside you Father and minister to these people Lord I thank you um, for the children um, in all these countries um, but specifically for Moldova right now um, I thank you um, for the fact that they are precious and that they are yours, God. Um, and so we pray right now, but as we go into a country as well, um, that you would just give us the capacity, um, again, to see them how you see them, Lord, um, that the love that we are sharing wouldn't be, um, we wouldn't be relying on ourselves to give, but we, uh, we can love because we realize that love comes from you. Um, I pray that we would, they would be able to um, see how valuable um, and significant and worthy and all these things um, that can be interchangeable with feeling loved, God. Um, I just pray that you would just uh, that you would mold us so that we would be able to be your vessel and then be able to overflow on this love that we have first received from you, God. So I pray that you would prepare our hearts right now um, and in the months to come, um, just really knowing your character and knowing your love and who you are so that we can just be filled with your grace and your love as we go. Um, in the summer, um, we thank you for your love, and we thank you for um, for the ways that you are going to work this summer. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Cara, I want to thank you for the opportunity we have to go and serve the children and their families in Ukraine. I ask that you would help us to be prepared in our hearts by reading your word and by prayer, that we would trust in you for everything and be able to share your love with the children. I would also like to ask that you would uh, provide everything we need from the financial funds to get there to the travel plans, things that can be so stressful for us. Thank you that you can see the big picture of mine and that you're going to take care of everything for us. We ask that you would help us with the cultural relationships. Um, we know your word is uh, applicable to everyone, no matter what country or language they have. We ask that you would help us to be respectful of their culture and to show your love to them without any unnecessary uh, offenses or misunderstandings that might happen because of the different culture. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for each one here. And Lord, you've, I've seen your hand work here as you brought, uh, have brought all these different people to, to these trips. Lord, thank you for supplying. Thank you for all the things that you've done and will do. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll show up in each one of these camps and uh, do something that we recognize that no one else could have done but God. Um, I pray specifically for the, the last, the couple of last days in the trips where it's you're tired and you're going to go home. And I just pray, God, at that time things won't fray. And I just pray, God, that uh, along the way that. Uh, relationships that are built will be long lasting and uh, everlasting thank you. thank you for each person in jesus name amen, amen. Okay. thank you folks let me get this started again here <clears throat> um I think one of the things that I wanted to talk about is, uh, and it's very important, is post-trip. Um, I think a lot of times we think we think about, you know, getting ready to go. And we think about, you know, we've got to get all these things and we've got to do all this. But the question, the real question is, what are you going to leave behind? What are you going to leave in the country for eternity? Um, I think each one of the... the each one of the interactions that you have with those people are uh, preordained. Uh, it's preordained. Uh, I, I can't tell you that uh, how important that is. I'll give you an example. Uh, in 2004, I went for the very first time to uh, Ukraine, and I met a, uh, my translator. It was kind of um, Quentin Marty, who's and his uh, son, kind of on the cuff, put us together. And um, one of the things that I'd wanted to do is to go end up going to Russia and actually working in Russia. Uh, that person ended up being my translator for 11 years. That person ended up going to Russia to be a missionary and inviting me over to Russia to come and and um, serve there. That person's been here. Her fam, their family has been here. Our family's been there. So, you know, I think the eternal uh, significance of these, the people that you meet on these trips, don't blow it off. Don't blow anybody off that you, you come across. That's important. It's so important to um, to pay attention to those uh, things that you that come up the people that uh, are there, the interpreters that are there, the people, everybody there, just pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start talking about travel. Um, I think one of the things that's very important for you guys is to, uh, is to register on the website. Uh, 
And the, the way you do that is you just go to the, um, come here. If you haven't done this, you need to do it. Um, it's actually the, where it says trip registration. You need to make sure that you go down and pick your trip, whatever trip you have, put in your name and address, birth date, phone number, email, any medical conditions you have, allergies, medications, uh, any kind of you know your family contact, you know, your family uh, contact relationship, phone number, physician, physician's office, and phone number and so forth and so forth. It is, this is important because we have to have this as a relief uh, when we're over there in Ukraine, okay, or wherever we're at, Russia or, or Moldova. So if you could do that, that would be very helpful and do that sooner than later uh, because the release is what, something we have to have before we leave. Uh, so make sure that you uh, uh, I have a question really quick. Yes. So um, does that mean if I registered like pre-accident um, that I should like, how should I go about that? Uh, I think there's two things. Uh, one, it, and Cindy can tell you whether you've already registered or not, but very few people have registered. There's a, there's a. Yeah, she did. Okay. She did register. Yeah, you don't have to do that. I'm just saying that there's a lot of people out there that have not yet registered, and we're yeah. sure that everybody does. I think most everybody on this call has. So do I need to like yeah. update? I didn't even know you had to. <laughs> oh, sorry, should Jerry. I, that's I, like, that's like, probably I my fault. It's <laughs> all right. Like, should I update it since, like, under the medical conditions, it was before all of this happened? That probably hit, would so. be a good idea. Okay, I can do that then. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. Okay, um, I just want to tell you that the people that are going to Russia, there really isn't anybody that's going to Russia other than Cindy and I, so we're just working to get the passports. That's a... That's a process all in its, its own self. So the visas, visas, you mean? Sorry. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we need a visa to go to Ukraine, or only the passport? No. For the, you only need a visa for Russia. Okay. Okay. Every other place Thanks. is good. Okay. Uh, Thank people you. going to Armenia need a visa, but they can buy that right at the airport for just a few dollars compared to Russia. It's it's a huge huge uh, task to get a visa for there. Okay. Um, is this stuff on the State Department website? I believe the requirements for each country. Um, the pa passport uh, visa and passport requirements. Yes, they are. Okay. State Department would have that on there. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at each one of these. This is where you'll be landing in Kissinu. You'll uh, Kishinil, you'll be landing at um, in the airport there. Um, I'm going to open it up so you can kind of actually see what that looks like. It's a pretty nice airport. Um, you know, there it is. It, that's not it, but that's it there. It's a very small airport, you know, uh, but it's very nice. Yeah, it's nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's you know it's not it's not really crowded. Whoops, let me back up here. It's not really that that airport is. I can't say that it's ever as really uh, crowded like the other airports can be. Um, let's open up. Uh, hold on. I just want to mention too that um, those of you going to Ukraine. Um, some of you may be going into Budapest and coming in that way by train. Yeah. So we're, we're still working on logistics for, for everybody on that team. This because is, some of you are going out of Budapest, too, at the end. Yeah. This Just is Marty. Yes? I don't know if you got the email. I sent it about 10 minutes before the meeting started. But we're fine with that if you want to fly us into Budapest at the beginning. Okay, good. That's what I'm thinking, since you're going to end up there, too. Okay. And, um, yeah. Thank you. And there's there's another couple that might do the same thing, but I'll I'll talk to you guys about that. We should have a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Great. So that, Thanks, you guys. You get the Thanks, idea uh, of what that looks like, and then um, 
and I'm just having a little problem with my web with my PowerPoint here. Was that Boris Paul in Kiev? Yeah. Yeah, that was I, I Boris Paul. Yeah, some of you and then uh, no, I don't want that. Well, okay, so then we have um, Sakhalin. Um, you can see what Sakhalin looks like. It's pretty. Um, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's. I think it's pretty remote. Um, okay. I'll let that come up there. Wow. Interesting. It, it really feels. It feels like the old Soviet Union. I mean, I think it feels it does. more or less like. <gasps> Look at that. Time that you know when I when I go to Ukraine, um, I think a lot of that feels like that. Um, this is the old. <laughs> it kind of it has that Soviet feel. <laughs> oh yeah. I got that Soviet Who's feel. Who Does it ever? So you know, I think it. I think Sakhalin is probably kind of a throwback, uh, but it looks like it's really beautiful. Uh, mm, it does. This year in a second, as soon as it comes up on the screen. But it's a uh, it's a really beautiful, uh, beautiful place. Looks like to me, Sakhalin is right is is north of Japan. Okay, so um, anyway, that's kind of where we're going. Oh, well, thank you, Larry. Landing for sharing that. So you guys um, can get an idea of what that looks like. Okay. Uh, Who will be picking you up in Moldova? Uh, I think Volodya will be involved in that, picking you up. Um, let me open him up and give you an idea. Um, let's see. Uh, here's Volodya. <laughs> see that or not? That'll take just a little bit. And Volodya will be in Moldova and in Ukraine both. Yep, he's going to be camp. in both places. Very nice guy. He's a uh, very personable, and he's an orphan. Uh, his he was orphaned later in life. So we're praying about uh, Volodya here because he's he's been approached by the army, and they want to kind of. I think they want him to go to the army. So we're praying that he doesn't end up going to the army um, in uh, in Moldova uh, also Michael uh, is going to be involved with with us Michael is the um, he's the camp director um, here's a picture of him once you get that open let me kill this okay so you get to see, there's Michael. He's uh, involved with Youth for Christ, and we'll be working uh, pretty closely with him um, in Moldova. Okay. He seems like he's uh, really uh, kind of on fire for the Lord, and I really appreciate yeah. Michael. Um, and, uh, and, and also in Russia, Anna is going to be involved with the camp. Uh, Anna is, I can kind of see her here. She's in the middle right here. Uh, right there's Anna. And she's going to be. She'll be in Russia. In yeah. Russia. She'll be the one that's yeah. pretty much taking every, uh, taking care of us in Russia. Okay. For those that are going to Russia. Uh, then we have the, we have the, let's see. This is the camp leader in Russia. Not that you guys care, but. Uh, that's, uh, I do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, this is kind of alluding to what um, Cindy was saying. Uh, kind of, it depends where you travel into. Some of you, I guess, will be going into Western Ukraine, and uh, whoever picks you up and gets you to where you need to be will be different if than if you go to Kiev. Okay. Uh, I just asked that I just gave you the email addresses and stuff of all the people contacts or the key contacts in, in Russia and in Moldova. I ask any of you to, if you want to contact or communicate with them, uh, send it to me first or Cindy. It doesn't matter uh, because I want to make sure that um, you know we we 
um, make sure that that communication goes, uh, it flows well. Of course, Michael will be the, uh, the leader there. And in Russia, we have the, that leader. And then in Ukraine, we're not quite sure who's, maybe you want to speak to that, Cindy, who's coordinating that camp, do you know? Uh, in Ukraine? Yeah. Well, uh, we, we have a brand new coordinator there in um, the Zakarpatya Uzhgorod region there. And um, I have I have not met her. Um, she actually was just hired into the ministry by Yuri, our Ukraine country director. Uh, her name is Magda, but I, I don't even know her last name yet. She's, you know, just brand new. But um, she's on fire for God, and she's on fire for reaching um, the... The, the Roma gypsy people there in that part of the country mm -hmm. uh, and she'll be working alongside um, our people that are going over from Zaporozhye, Lena Volkova and Olga Zikova. Yeah, uh, um, I want to thank you guys for your patience because we're covering something, some of this doesn't re relate to all of you guys at all but just thank you for your patience because we're talking about something that may pertain to you and say may not so just thank you for your patience. Um, there's a special request that I have, and I don't know if we're actually going to be able to do this or not. Michael um, is the guy, okay, the guy that was um, actually the, the Ukrainian, I mean the Moldovan leader, and he he he's doing a promotion for the camp, okay, and he wants us to do to say a phrase and this is the phrase right here okay and so i don't know if you got, guys could say that uh i don't even know how you would get through it but uh, i think you can sound it out like it looks okay like hi salute noi vinyl la you want to try that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to record the screen uh so that i can actually See that and send it to him. He's using. He's going to be using this to promote the camp. And actually, he's already done a promotion. But um, if you guys want to, I'm gonna <laughs> green. <laughs> I told you I was learning Romanian. <laughs> Let me see if I can open. Angliza, Angliza, that's English. Yeah. I can, you can kind of pick some of it out. Let me. I'm gonna. Put, Salute is hello. I'm, I'm Greetings. Gonna, Try to open this up as much as I can. All right. So whenever you guys want to start, Cindy, why don't you lead them? Start it. Oh, Hi. dear. Okay. Hi. Hi. Salute. Salute. Noi. Noi. Venim. La Moldova. La Sabara. La Tici. Entru. Ate. In Bata. In Ilesea. Te as tira tam su mer a colo. Yay! Wow! Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right. Uh, there. I guess that'll be good enough. <laughs> That's what he asked for. That's what he got. That's right. There you go. Little does he know That's that. What he asked for. Uh, little does he know that we never meet in the room until we get to the place that we're going. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not like a traditional way. Um, there, we already did this. So, all right, let's go. This is Ukraine, um, and I, the transportation to and from the camp it's still being determined. Uh, Russian will be with the brothers in the church, and they have different drivers that will go back and forth. And, uh, and Moldova will actually be staying in the camp, so we're not going to be going back and forth. Uh, here's but I can say one thing quickly, that you won't be staying in the accommodations that you're looking at. <laughs> that's, but that, this is but that's, where, that's where some of these people live, you guys, in places mm -hmm. that look like that. We're going to... Just this so is that you're prepared. Ukraine, this is actually where uh, the camp is going to be. We're going to go over the locations for each one of these camps. And uh, this is a Transcarpathian region. Uh, that's actually where um, you're going to be. And um, it's out way out there, all the way down at the left, 
fathers to the uh, east uh, western part of Ukraine. Okay, um, that's that's really where it is. Okay, all the way out there. All right, and so um, that's and and then we'll take a look here. At, actually, we'll look at this picture and uh, find a little bit of, more about this. This is from Paul. Um, this this is the new initiative to reach the gypsies and uh, communities in Western Ukraine. Okay. Um, and they're going to use Tamar clubs. There's a very large Roma. Roma is gypsy population in the Transcarpathian region. Roma have a caste system like the Indian caste system. Um, and that most of these communities are in the lowest caste. So they're the poorest. They have uh, they're very dis uh, heavy dis discrimination. Um, they don't have much in, uh, education. 60% of working age Roma are, have not completed their primary education. Um, many of the, the children are illiterate. Parents don't send them to school. Uh, children who go to school are discriminated against, and I've seen that actually. Employment, high unemployment, low uh, skilled, skilled jobs. Most live off the government welfare programs of the work informally uh, for the neighbors or friends. Access to uh, secure housing, most living in dilapidated houses in the slums. The communities lack basic utilities. The access to health care, most Roma households cannot afford basic medical care and medicines. Uh, children especially vulnerable. Um, uh, these are several strong, there are several strong evangelical churches of the Roma communities. Tomorrow clubs will be working with these churches and help them uh, bring what they lack most, hope uh, and everlasting hope that only the gospel can bring. Um, let's go here one more. This is a, more of a picture of you can actually see how dilapidated it is. Uh, that's kind of That's kind of the gig right there. So that's what Ukraine, uh, that's where you're going in Ukraine, uh, to that, those people. Um, the, in Moldova, uh, I'll actually show you um, a picture, a little a video of the camp in Moldova. It's actually a camp area, so a really camp site. So here's a video of that. get the idea uh, that's actually something I found on their website um, so uh, that's the camp that's actually going to be in in uh, Moldova um, in Russia it's going to uh, basically in Russia we're going to have uh, we're going to be in the church and that's where the camp's actually going to be held um, and I'm going to give you a uh, kind of a look at um, Sakhalin, you can kind of get an uh, idea of what that looks like. Um, there's, uh, it's very, looks like a very beautiful place to me. Um, an island country. It's gonna be cold. 
Uh, very cold. I think it will be cold. And um, not for Minnesotans. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, the summer though will be colder than our summers here, I guess. So it's you know I don't think you have to worry about being cold. Uh, I mean worry about <laughs> hot. So yeah, yeah. that's what Sakhalin is going to look like. Wow. Okay. Um, in Russia, we're going to be staying in a local host homes, and we'll have breakfast and dinner with the host homes and lunch with the kids. In Moldova, we'll be at the camp all week, all day long. Um, in Ukraine, the same thing. You'll be at the host homes and breakfast and dinner with uh, breakfast and dinner uh, with the host, at the host homes and then lunch with the kids. Um, let's, I'm going to go over this really quickly and then I think, I don't think I'm going to actually get into the schedule. I'm just going to go over your requirements and this is things that you're going to need to, your team is going to need to be preparing for, um, your camp. Okay. Um, you're going to need, uh, there's, there's, in, in some cases there's two church services in some cases there's one and it depends really how you're traveling. Uh, if you are there on the Sunday, on a Sunday, you'll be involved in a church service. You should provide, you should get your testimony ready, okay? And there should be, there's going to be at least three people asked to give their testimony at any of those services, okay? Typically in uh, the church service, the oldest, uh, uh, the like the senior male, uh, senior uh man is asked to give a sermon at sermonette. It could be, uh, you know, 15 to 20 minutes long. Um, so that's something that you're going to need to prepare. So you should be writing your, your testimony right now. And then if you look around and you see you're probably the oldest male in the, uh, on the team, you, you're probably going to be asked to give us, ser uh, give a sermon. Okay. Okay. So the English lessons and all the supplies that go with an English lesson, we'll actually open that up and take a look at one of the uh, English lessons in the beginner there. Um, Hope International, or actually Tomorrow Clubs, uh, is going to provide you the curriculum that you'll need to be able to teach English. Okay. And so it's pre written. And one of the things that you need to do is review this. You can actually get it on the website. And there's three different uh, curriculums, one for six to nine, and then I think uh, nine to like 12, and then 12 and above. They typically break them down by age groups, okay? In the curriculum, if you look at the front page, you'll see that um, your per They'll have the uh, participants' responsibility, and then you also uh, have Hope International. Instead of Hope International there, it should be Tomorrow Clubs, okay? So um, you'll be bringing – you'll need to uh, bring these things uh, to be able to teach, and Hope will provide uh, the other side. So the column on the left is yours. The column on the right is Tomorrow Clubs. Those are the things that will be provided. Um and you may not need all those things. Uh, what I would suggest is you look through each one of the days and you look what it actually takes to um, teach, okay? And you bring the supplies that you need to teach. So there's two things that you're really going to want to do. You're going to want to review. Um, you're going to want to decide if you want to teach the littlest kids, the middle kids, or the older kids. You need to decide that. And then um, you also need to look at these curriculums and decide, uh, you know, what kind of supplies you would like to bring along that are not going to be provided for you for that group. Um, so that's what I would suggest you do. Now, in, in a lot of times, in many um, cases, you don't really get the opportunity. Sometimes you don't get the opportunity to choose. You just got to teach it and you kind of got to go with the flow. Um, you know, you got to be um, kind of, you know, very flexible. You have any questions about the curriculums? I mean, we're gonna we're gonna delve into that real close uh, in the future. 
uh, in a future meeting, we're actually going to get into what it's like to teach uh, a day uh, of English. Okay, dramas and skits. Basically, there's silent mime dramas. Basically, you've seen them. Um, there's a spiritual truth that is provided in the silent drama. And at the end of the drama, someone comes out and kind of explains what that's going to be, what that drama said, okay? Kind of a mime type thing. Nobody says anything. You just act it out, and there's a spiritual truth that's communicated there. The skits, um, those are uh, games that we often we like to play. Um, a good one is a, a toilet paper race that we do. Uh, we get each one of the leaders, uh, one the leader to, from each group, from each teaching group to come out, and then two of the kids to come out with, uh, come up front, and then we provide them toilet paper, and we give them five minutes, and we see you can uh, cover the person, the leader, uh, so see which group can cover their leader completely with toilet paper. So those are the types of supplies that you'll have. And I have a list of dramas and skits that we've done in the past, so you won't have to be thinking of what you need to do. Uh, songs and supply, songs and the supplies that are related to songs. Uh, there'll be probably one song that you need to sing in the church service, probably more of a worship type song like You Are My All in All or, um, you know, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. And then also you will have four to five camp songs that you need to provide and prepare for. Um, Who's the King of the Jungle is a good one. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's another good one. Uh, Father Abraham, that's a good one. Uh, both type songs need to be the types that, are, that have a lot of motions to them. That's the important part. Puppets, that's something that you're, it's optional. Uh, puppets are pretty effective, but you have to decide whether you want to do that or not. Sports supplies. The Moldova team, I don't think we're going to have to bring as many sports supplies as we typically do. So that may not be as much of a requirement. Um, but the sports that we typically do, one of the things that we do every year is uh, the water balloon slingshot. Uh, we, what we do is we get um, each one of those groups, we have a sheet. We give them a sheet and we tell them to go down on the end of the, room, uh, end of the, uh, the field and gather around that sheet and hold on to the sheet. And then we have like four or five uh, water balloon slingshots on the other end of the field where the leaders actually get to, they shoot the water balloons out way up in the air and the kids get to try to catch those water balloons by holding onto the sheet. They try to catch them in the sheet, uh, which is really fun. They love to get wet. And then at the end of that, um, at, at the end of uh, that thing, it's not just how many water balloons you can catch, but you, they, all the leaders at the end of that are in a 10 by 10 square and the kids who caught those water balloons gather around the outside of where the leaders are in that 10 by 10 square and take those water balloons that they caught and pelt the leaders. So <laughs> they, they love, the, that's something that the kids really love to do. So the more fun that you can have for the kids, the better they enjoy it. So that's a, that's a good thing. Okay. You'll need to bring gifts for your children, like little gifts, like um, uh, Pencil. pencils and yeah. candies and little things for your bobbles, hair bobbles. I take hair bobbles along. And then you'll have to have something nicer for the interpreters and for the helpers. And uh, if you stay in a host home, you want to bring something for the man and the woman in the home. Uh, typically, I always, I usually take a T-shirt. It says USA on it and maybe a, a mug uh, or, you know, something nice that says USA. I think it says one USA on it. They like that. Okay, then we'll have, then you have a cultural day on, I think it's the second or third day. We typically do a cultural day, um, what's called American Day. And we basically break the whole camp into uh, three groups. And then we have three stations. And those three stations, the each group will uh, actually cycle through the stations, and they'll spend 15 minutes at each station. And 
each station, there's something that's specific about the American culture. One, uh, we typically, well, we do one with history, which we tell about, you know, Thanksgiving and the 4th of July and what happened to our country because the kids are interested and you'll, you'll have an interpreter that's assigned to you. So, you know, there won't be any problem with the, the, the uh, speaking. Um, and then we do a food. Typically we do peanut butter and jelly. I know some of you guys may shudder at that, but uh, believe it or not, they don't have the same kind of uh, allergies that we do. And the last one would be sports. So we have three stations to go through that and it exposes them to our culture. And then the following day, uh, they'll do their culture. So uh, we have to prepare for that. Jesus movie. I think all the locations that I that I'm doing, Russia and Moldova, they do have a projector and we just have to provide the Jesus movie. And it's typically the children's version of the Jesus movie. And uh, for for our uh, camp in Moldova, oh, it's going to be Romanian. Uh, for um, I don't know uh, what language the Ukrainian are going to speak. Cindy, do you know? Probably Ukrainian. Okay. In so, that part of the country. Yeah, you just need to. I'll need to check on that and make sure that that's uh, yeah. that's covered. Okay, and then there's these additional assignments that you'll need to bring or need to be uh, uh, assigned. Somebody needs to prepare for leading the sports because of the sessions that we have to do the sports on and games uh, for the camps. Um, their team photographer, you need to have somebody that's responsible to take the pictures. Typically, that person uh, sometimes doesn't teach. Depending on how you All this is going to be... Um, subject to how many people you have um, because some of you are going to have to double up if you have a small group you're going to have to do more than one thing so uh, so everything is subject to that the computer leader uh, actually the person who would be responsible for the Jesus movie and um, some of the th other things a devotional there'll be five daily devotionals that uh, the team is responsible for to give uh, a daily devotional at the beginning of the day. It's just five minutes and uh, one person each day will be responsible for that. Uh, the preaching leader is going to be uh, somebody that's responsible to to do the, uh, you know, coordinate any preaching. If you have multiple, sometimes you have multiple responsibilities for preaching and then you just have to coordinate that. Eng English curriculum, we looked at the English curriculum um, there needs to be somebody that coordinates purchasing all those uh, English curriculum supplies. It's better to do that in a group than to actually have one each person do it on their own. Luggage leader, that person is responsible basically for the team's luggage if you travel together. If you don't travel together, they're not as responsible for you know your, your luggage. They are responsible at when they move it from place to place in country. Um, if you're traveling together, also if there's something lost, uh, any baggage that's lost, that person's responsible for that. Music leader, that person will be responsible for preparing, preparing the uh, and leading the camp songs, and also uh, all Americans would be involved in that, and then the and also responsible for leading uh, the song in the church service. Um, we also need a nurse. Uh, Lisa was a nurse last time. Responsible with first aid kit and medicines, responsible to gather emergency contact list, and responsible for the camp's uh, first aid treatments. And then uh, also gather medical and travel insurance information. A drama and skit leader, basically responsible to prepare the dramas and skits for the camp. Uh, and I'm moving fast because I know we're kind of out of time. Um, so uh, let's see, outreach. Also, in the evenings, many times you'll have the opportunity to go out and share your faith with different people uh, in the community. And so just you need to be ready to prepare to be able to share your faith. That's actually something that I'll, I'll do for you or go over for you. Um, we also have a list of things that you should bring um, that you should bring or pack on your whoops. Hang on just a second. Let's go. Hang on.
What happened? Alright. Alright. Here's the packing list. It's actually out on the website and then you can go and look at it. Um, it's pretty uh, you know, it's pretty self explanatory. There are some requirements, particularly around church, uh, that you should be aware of, especially the females. Um, you, you, if your uh, dresses and skirts are the, the things that you're going to have to do, um, it, as you see down here, clothing for church, married women will need to wear a scarf and a head covering. Women and girls will need to wear a dress and skirt. Men will, should wear dress in casual pants, uh, no jeans in church, and comfortable, comfortable shoes and sandals for um, walking. Okay, uh, let's see here. And this is all stuff that you can go back and look at, at in your leisure, okay? I'm just going really quick. Um, there's also trip information that you can go out and look at, and then there's some, uh, there's some uh, recap videos, and then on, when you get this PowerPoint, you can go out and look at your the daily uh, schedules. I actually have included the schedules here. You just have to click on them and look at them. It gives you a day. It gives you the whole schedule right now of what we know about it. I'm not going to get into that because it's, it's just going to be more time. We'll, get, we'll dig into that a little bit more um, next time. I have one more thing that I want to uh, I want to do here. I just want to show you guys, and I don't know how well it'll work, but I want to show you one recap uh, video that we had from the last uh, camp that we did in Moldova uh, in 2004. So it'll give you an it'll give you an idea of uh, what you're going to expect, what to expect um, in the camp. So there you go. Hopefully you can hear it.